So this week I thought I would show you this little garden box. Um, we've got strawberries along the outside, carrots, nasturtium, there is an ornamental pepper back there. We have dinosaur kale in the middle. And I overseeded these to begin with, so as I've thinned out certain plants, we just put them in our smoothies. And then here in the front is a flower, a paper moon scabiosa. More nasturtium and more carrots. And then a lavender plant in the front corner. And then one black-eyed Susan vine starting to climb this trellis. All right, let's walk around to the back main garden. So a little bit has changed since last week. I was hoping that more would have gotten accomplished, but that's about how it goes. So we'll start back here. Again, this is the corn bed and you can see how the Three Sisters method is working with the squash layer of um, as a living mulch. It's shading out any weeds growing along the edges of the bed. And there's that one beautiful corn stalk. <laughs> um, there are beans climbing up it, but they haven't started producing flowers yet. We have already harvested about five pink banana squash off of this the, these four squash plants. So there's four squash plants in the corner of this, in the corners of this rectangle bed. And um, this is how crazy they've gotten. I see a lot of flowers, but no new fruit. And as I have further investigated, it looks like there are a lot of male flowers and not any female flowers open at the same time right now, which means there is no pollination happening. Um, so we'll just take a look inside of this flower. And this is an example of a male flower. The main um, anther, it's just a single anther and it's pointy and slender, whereas a female flower has a more curvy um, stigma. So it's, it's a sticky center that is more curvaceous. All right, uh, we did finish pulling up all the garlic. And so we've got that greenhouse plastic covering this bed until we are ready to plant something new. In the meantime, we are smothering any weeds that might want to pop up. Back here, we have our tomato wall of indeterminate tomatoes, and they haven't really put any fruit out. Um, so I'm not sure if that is due to the fact that they weren't really getting much sun with the garlic in front when they were shorter but now that they're taller I'm hoping they will start to take off. You can see how I've pruned them to be a single main stalk and will continue to do so as they climb up 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 and then there are some zucchini back here that's one climbing is a different variety and I can't remember what it is but um, it might be black beauty so that's growing there and there is a ground cherry right in there and it is starting to put on some husks like tomatillo would the other one on the side it um, was lopped off but it's starting to regrow and grow back um, so we'll see hopefully pollination is not an issue there but everything is a new lesson is our fig tree 
and let's turn back around and go to the next bed. So we have the Zinnia and Amaranth bed with Swiss chard in the front. And last week I hadn't yet pruned this bed, but I went through and pinched, also known as pruning, um, my zinnias. So you can see here, here is where I cut them just one week ago today. And already we have side shoots. So where there would have been one main stem, we now have two stems branching off. And once this blooms, I will pinch this one and pinch this one and it will bush out even further. So, um, a lot of these leaves are looking pretty rough due to all the rain and cool weather we've had, but this is what a cactus zinnia looks like. Isn't it beautiful? It's one of my favorites. It reminds me of silly string. Okay, and then I lopped off the Amaranth too. This is Love Lies, Love Lies Bleeding. And it gets a nice tassel, but it's pink and long. And then the Rainbow Swiss Chard in the front. We've got Cinderella pumpkins and some corn that Lucy accidentally spilled over there. It's starting to come up. You can see a lot of nut sedge thriving and popping up, and it is the bane of my existence. Um, I'm going to have to invest in a hori hori knife to really get those suckers out of the ground because when you pull nut sedge up, it just sends out more. You've got to get that main mother plant. There's that calendula. These peppers are doing so well. These are poblanos, and I would say about three weeks ago, I pinched these, I pruned them, and let's just go down and find where I did that. So you can see how tall it is now, and there's some flowers. Way down here is where I pinched them. So I just clipped the top off. And now we've got all this growth, all these side shoots the energy went back down into the plant and sent out more bushy growth so we've got lots of flowers now and that's gonna be great I know we'll have peppers soon here are my dahlias I also pinched those and you can see the side shoots coming off of where I did that and then down here we've got our Italian basil and some cosmos mixed in with some nut sedge. <laughs> All right, here are the determinate heirloom tomatoes. We've got the mortgage lifter here and black cherry, and they are probably um, winning the race right now in our garden as far as fruiting tomatoes, or it might be a tie with the San Marzanos. Um, there's some little tomatoes the black cherry is putting on. So excited about those. But this Florida weave could be a little, could stand to be a little bit taller, like by a foot or two. So as we move forward, we will probably make sure of that. Okay, the next bed are these poppies. Some of these went out this week in the first um, flower subscribers delivery and this is an heirloom variety called Lauren's Grape. So poppies are awesome. I love these seed heads. I love how fragile everything is but then it produces the seed head. So if you forget to pick your poppies just know that as the petals fall away this seed head is going to grow and become this this can be used fresh or dried and I just find that to be so enchanting 
So that's about half of this, two thirds of this bed. And we had some Bells of Ireland mixed in here and I pulled all that out. We've got some kohlrabi that I am about to pull out because it is just, it's been too hot for it to bulb out. So we will cook those greens as if they were kale or collards and stew them. And then this bed was extra hairy. The calenda was wild. And so I pruned that way back, um, basically down to two sets of leaves. Um, I just went through and cut it down so it'll send up tall stems and tall flowers. Here we have my favorite Cracker Jack Marigold about to bloom. And now the eggplants can see the light of day because they're not being shaded out. And I even pruned back these patty pan squash just to let more light and airflow through. The tomatillos are getting tall. We haven't had too many, but the ones we have had have been just an amazing flavor. Um, a little tart, but mostly sweet. There's one kohlrabi bulbing out. And then there are some more peppers in here that I pruned. Um, they were just miscellaneous peppers. And again, you can see I pinched it back to there and now look at all this growth. So we should have lots of peppers coming on soon. There's our giant potato pot. And the chicken garden bed with all the buckwheat and some black-eyed Susans and snapdragons spilling out. On this side of the arch trellis, I have some more bush beans. This is the contender variety. So those are just coming on. They just um, started pollination. I love this variegated nasturtium. It's probably my favorite. And I had planted huckleberries from seed here and a lot of them were eaten by slugs. I just didn't stay on top of the sluggo. But here are some that are surviving. And then we have patty pan squash down here down bottom here is some borage, which the bees are just still in love with. All right, over here, let's see. Hmm, not a whole lot going on over here right now, but there are some, I know I saw some patty pan squash. Hmm, I'll check back. Here's a tomatillo about ready. And then these scarlet runner beans are taken off. Finally! The beans are such a bright pink color. All right, moving on. I just pulled up the turnips the other day, so they were all right here. There's some borage falling over from all the rain. There's the mixture of zucchini, and this is African blue basil that I had planted last year and it reseeded itself. It's nice to see you again. And there's some leeks mixed in there, potatoes, even some cilantro if you can see it for the nutsedge. You pull up slowly it's more likely to come out <laughs> it's always good to weed after it rains it's a little bit easier more potatoes sprawling and then here is a mix of columbine and scabiosa back here both cut flowers random pots edible flower tubs and then I've got collards on their way out. 
tut soy is on its way out. And these provider bush beans have been a winner so far. We have pulled so many beans off of these plants. Uh, mixed in there is also pansies that I grew from seed. An edible flower as well. And they've got a little bit of a variety in here. There's these. So pretty. There's some more of that basil popping up. The kids' favorite snack in the garden are these beans. They just love them. And Lucy is not one to eat veggies, but she will snack on some garden beans. I cleared out this bed, which had parsley. And I'll do a follow-up video on saving that parsley seed. And the bachelor buttons were in here. It's all gone. There's one lone pepper, and I'm going to have to move him or plant around him. This was the bed that had cilantro that went to seed, as well as lots of bouquet dill, which also went to seed. So I will have to do a video on that. Um, but in here we have, I've planted purple opal basil and cosmos. Mexican sunflower and Persian carpet zinnias and then down here we have an, a younger borage plant and some red curry squash that I'm going to encourage to grow up and over this obelisk that Nathan made a few years ago. Back here still need to clear out this bed the snapdragons and calendula um, we're probably going to do some more okra back here in one of these empty beds. And we've got some zinnias, a sprawling tomato. The wheat is drying out, so I'll save it for dried arrangements. Those poppies look so sad. And then there's the dahlia from seed that should bloom soon. Next to that, I have a few carrots. And then all the San Marzano's and Tulsi basil. So again, we did not trellis these, but we may still give it a shot. We'll see. Um, these are the San Marzano's. So they're looking really good. And then the arugula took off again. Here's the Swiss chard from the fall. And then over here we have more zinnias. Um, as you'll see, the rusty leaf um, is due to all this cool weather, cool wet weather, all this rain. Um, zinnias really don't mind a rain shower, but they like it when it's so hot that the water evaporates quickly and that hasn't been happening so the lower leaves aren't very pretty but um, once those side shoots come up and they start blooming those will be nice and green like these right then we have some more peppers these are the tabasco peppers these are probably the most bushy of all of the peppers that i've pruned and they look really good so there's three of them there. And then those contender bush beans that just started to fruit. All right, we're back here now, just back. Final bed. This is the hodgepodge of annuals and perennials <laughs> that I mentioned last week. So I have patty pan squash around the lemongrass that you see coming out. So let's find a patty pan squash. There it is. Whoa. Okay. There's that patty pan squash. There's another one. There. And it'll turn yellow and get a little bit bigger. These are some black-eyed Susans. Look at all those buds. Starting to bloom. 
sunflowers in the back. Love Black Eyed Susans. They will come back every year. And the birds love them and thank you for them in the winter because they just um, enjoy the seed. And then mixed in with all of this stuff are okra. So look how different the okra looks this week from last. So different. Uh, and then there are also some artichokes mixed in here. More okra. And this okra, this artichoke is kind of getting some shade, but hopefully I'm going to be pruning back this Black Eyed Susan soon, so we'll get some more light to that. Yeah. So that is all. Let me know if you have questions. If you'd like to see any more process videos, I will be sharing the seed saving video soon.